What is going on Babylonians? It's me, Songs of Rays, back with another Outriders World Slayer video to bring to you. And today we're going to be covering one of my favourite builds that's currently actually in the game. And this started off with a little bit of testing and then became to be the Carpet Bomber build which we're actually going to be looking at. And now the re main reason behind this is obviously we do use Scrapnel. And if you remember in Vanilla Outriders, Scrapnel was actually pretty awful. Uh, it, was, it could get the job done but it was terrible when it came to co-op and it just didn't really give you any kind of real benefit over any of the other kind of builds that you actually had going in Vanilla. And especially especially wasn't comparable to Firepower Technomancer. I feel like that is now potentially taking close to that role, if not already surpassed it, depending on how you managed to get this rolled up. Uh, but overall, I think this is a lot of fun. I genuinely do find this one of my favorite builds to actually start running in this game. And what we'll do is we'll go through the build, we'll go through all, everything that actually makes this so good, and then we'll actually explain what is the strengths, what is the weaknesses, and be able to give you all that good information and a little bit of like help, hints and tips as to how to actually get and maximize the most out of this build. Before we go any further, make sure you have dropped a like and a subscribe on the channel. It really does help the channel out, and let's get right into it. Alright, so first and foremost, as we always do, we're going to be covering the gear. So if we go into our inventory screen, you can see our stats up there on the screen. And overall, these are pretty decent. Our armor is a little bit on the low side due to that. Uh, but we actually do go into that when it comes to our class tree. So actually, don't worry too much about the fact that it only says 54.4% reduction. You will actually have more than that when you actually use some of your skills. Now, we've got to have a look into the actual stats firm because we, I don't normally actually show this off. But I want to actually give you an idea as to why this is so strong. And the reason why is because we are using things like armor pierce to then feed back into our resistance pierce and the fact that we're doing 80% resistance pierce is absolutely huge and allows the vast majority of our damage to actually go straight through into the enemy. Our, call, our global cooldown is, is as low as we can possibly get. Now, I believe this is normally around about 50%, but if you do have any kind of like uh, specific cooldowns that say a specific skill, then it will actually take it down less than that 50%. So you don't need to worry too much about that. We'll get into the cooldowns in very, very shortly. Status power is absolutely huge on this, and uh, we try to maximize this wherever possible. Uh, but unfortunately, because we are going for a torrential downpour set, that doesn't roll with status power. So therefore, we are missing out on that a little bit. But we're, basically, we've, we've stacked it up as much as physically possible to be able to to give us that kind of competitive edge. All right, so that's enough of the stats. So let's actually have a look into the gear and why this actually makes sense. Now, preferably you want to have something that actually has armor pierce and status power when it comes to your weapon, because your armor pierce will feed back into your resistance piercing, which will then feed back into your anomaly power. And also status power will actually give us that bonus damage to our, our scrapnel, which we'll cover very, very shortly when it comes to the pax trees. So in terms of the best roll that I've actually managed to get so far, I am still looking for my perfect god roll, uh, which we'll cover that in very, very shortly. But I've managed to get a uh, Torment and Agony, which does come with Armor Pierce, does come with status power, and it came with the Apocalypse mod of Omen. So when Omen, I was obviously very, very good for this because it allows us to be able to do a decent amount of damage and allows us to be able to put bleed. But the main thing is that it gives us a, uh, a damage debuff against enemies that get hit by it for 10% for three seconds, for, and this really cools down every single four seconds. So therefore, this gives us a really nice increase to our damage it's not substantial but it definitely does help and uh, that's that's probably why it's one of the best kind of like mods to actually get for this i have put mage's rage on this because mage's rage is absolutely broken right now it's definitely one of the best kind of like uh mods to actually put into your build if you can actually get uh, get away with it and actually use it in your anomaly power builds and you could potentially actually use it to do some really good jobs stacking up for firepower builds as well but i've yet to test that one out so i'll come back to you with that with that kind of confirmation but Mage's Rage uh, allows us to be able to stack our Anomaly Power by 10% up to 4 times for 15 seconds, so therefore we can get a nice boost of 40% just from that. And this just allows our Anomaly Power to actually skyrocket, so you'll actually see some of the footage in the background. I have actually managed to hit over 5 million uh, Anomaly Power with that, and uh, that allows us to be able to, and this is just at a, an average gear level of 63, so I can imagine when we hit 75 it will be even higher, especially with the numbers and that actually increase with our armor mods. Now, if I was to actually be honest with you and say what would be the perfect god roll for this, you would want a, a gun that rolls with armor pierce, status power, and then you would want mage's rage on there. You'd want death renome because death renome gives you a massive anomaly power boost, and uh, I would highly recommend that you try and pick that up. And then if there was, a, if you're looking for an epic, to be able to give yourself options, um, an epic perfect, perfect kind of like tier two mod to actually get for this would probably be something like resistance breaker, which allows you to be able to actually reduce uh, enemies' resistance by a certain amount, and that allows you to be able to deal even more damage or if you're looking for a tier 3 mod then omen is actually still pretty good fortress would also be a really nice op option as well and uh you know th that's just to give you an idea of what the perfect god roll is. i haven't found this yet but uh, that's definitely on my to-do list to be able to go out and actually find that 
All right, so then if we have a look into the armor, and this is where things get really, really spicy, so let's have a look. So we're going for a three-piece one on the torrential downpour. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because the cluster bombs on this are absolutely insane, and it increases the DPS of our scrapnels. So this allows us to be able to actually do those six, six scrapnels, one burst of the uh, of uh, of the Arbiter when he's over-leveled, and it also allows us to be able to do it when he's obviously at the standard uh, normal level as well, and even faster when it comes to it. Now they do scale with anomaly power and because we are increasing our anomaly power you'll notice that it actually does seem to pretty much match perfect uh, for our current base anomaly power as it currently is. So the more we actually do stack that up the more our cluster bombs are actually going to be doing. Which is why Mage's Rage is so important when it comes to this. Now the, the roles on this were our anomaly power, skills, life leech and cooldown reduction. I would have liked to have seen skills, life leech taken out and actually be replaced with status power but unfortunately that's the roles that we actually did have to deal with and we're now sacrificing the increased damage to our initial scrapnel. Uh, to be able to do even more kind of like cluster, to be able to help us out with mobbing, to be able to help us out with a little bit more DPS that way. It should technically work out even more DPS through the use of cluster bombs, uh, but obviously those are then reliant on them actually landing in the first place. So the first few mods that we've actually got on this are Alchemical Mastery. When we actually have our Blighted Rounds equipped and used, uh, we gain a 15% increase to our Anomaly Power by, uh, based on our Status Power, based on whichever is higher. So therefore we get a nice 15% increase to our Anomaly Power, which then goes straight back into all of our kind of multipliers. So therefore I do think this is one of the better kind of mods to actually go for. And when you actually do your uh, main DPS, your main burst phase, you will always have Blighted Rounds active to be able to actually get the most out of it. There will be another mod we'll cover very, very shortly. But there's a reason why we actually do go for this, and this allows us to be able to skyrocket our DPS. Now we do also have more traps to be able to throw out additional scrapnels, and this allows us to be able to actually throw out even more to be able to before we go into our cooldown, so it allows us to be able to get, obviously maximise our DPS that way. I got a really good roll on this, which allowed me to have euthanizer when it comes to uh, this, which when we use the Pax Tree, allows our scrapnels to be able to inflict toxic, so therefore every single uh, scrapnel that's after that will then be dealing 16% more damage, and I highly recommend that you try and get something with euthanizer on in the first place. All right, moving swiftly on, we have the chest piece where we actually have a uh, trap cluster, uh, which doubles the amount of mines that we can actually carry before we go into cooldown. Now, currently, because we're, 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 of the armor pieces that we've looked at so far, this means that we are now th th doubling our two to four, uh, but we will actually be picking up another one a little bit later on, which allows us to double from three to six. Uh, and obviously, this is kind of always pretty much important when you actually do use your scrapnels, and uh, Trap Cluster is definitely a better mod to actually use the more you actually use those tier one mods to be able to increase the amount of scrapnels you can throw out. Now the other good mod that we have for Blighted Rounds is To The Bone, which when the skill is active increases our anomaly damage by 15%. This is a very good mod overall, and it can actually be used to a really good extent on Firepower builds. I highly recommend if you are using Blighted Rounds in either a Firepower or an Anomaly fashion, you rec I recommend that you actually do get this mod, and I highly recommend you actually do use the, use the majority of it in that sense. Now it did also come with a really nice mod on our Apocalypse of self-medication and this is where most of the tankiness will actually come into it. So if you haven't already watched the video that we've covered already on this, self-medication basically, while it does say increase your max health by 10% and when any skill starts its cooldown and stacks up to 3 times and each stack lasts 5 seconds, what it will also do is refill your health to full and then give you that 10% and that allows you to be able to just have like a fixing wave, kind of like a like a weird fourth skill in a way uh, to be able to keep yourself healthy. There have been a couple of times because of how close range you have to play this build to enemies because of how Scrapnel actually works that you actually start getting a little bit low on health and all you need to do is actually just check out one of your skills which in this case will be our Blighted Turret and we'll explain why that's so efficient uh, very very shortly when we get onto the skills tab to be able to actually fill our health all the way back up to full and then we actually uh, start the process all over again when it comes to it. So I highly recommend you do try and find self-medication but everything so far is really good roll and pretty much almost essential. I would highly recommend that you do try and find at least some of these Apocalypse mods uh, to be able to get the most out of this build. Moving down, we have a different a different armor piece because the, the legs don't really offer too much. I believe it offers us additional resistance. So we might as well go for something that gives us anomaly power and uh, status power and cooldown reduction. And in which case, that's where the Flame Leopard legs come actually into this. So therefore, get a waste cloth of the Flame Leopard, give us a virulent compound. And this allows us to be able to do 10% more damage to elites that have been afflicted by toxic or blight fire. Obviously, we can't deal with blight fire because we aren't using the... Uh, uh, the Flame Leopard full set. Um, and what this does is, um, and it also gives us an additional thing on top of that where any kind of like elites that have been killed while they've been afflicted with Toxic will explode for a decent amount of damage and then spread that status across. Not too much of a different, like the main thing that we're going for. We're just primarily going for that 10% against elites, which is quite nice. 
We also have picked up more damage to be able to increase the amount of damage that our Scrapnel will actually do in the first place. Highly recommend that you actually do pick this up because uh, obviously the Scrapnel is going to be our main damage dealer. So therefore any kind of massive increase to the actual damage in the first place is pretty much a no-brainer. Highly recommend you grab that. Now the Apocalypse mod that did come on this was Freezing Boost. Uh, we don't really use Freeze that much to be completely honest with you. Um, the only real kind of like reliable way that you can actually inflict Freeze in the first place is using your melee. And uh, even then it's just purely there to be able to take on maybe like Arbiter or something like that. You're not really going to use this in a, in a massive fashion. So therefore this is kind of like a flex spot. You don't need this in the build. Lastly, we do have, well, one of the last pieces that we do to round off the set bonus is the Torrential Downpours Gloves. And one these, because of the buffs that we've actually had to Anomaly Echo, is definitely one of the better kind of like mod slots for this. Uh, so while it does roll with max health and comes with skills like Life Leech, which technically aren't good mods for this build, uh, I would much prefer Anomaly Power or Status Power. The fact that it comes with Anomaly Echo and I managed to get an Apocalypse roll with Arms and Anomaly allows me to be able to stack my Anomaly Power up to stupid amounts. So I highly recommend that you actually get both of these into any kind of anomaly power build in the first place they're definitely definitely worthwhile fitting into anything not just this build and then we've also replaced one of the mods on there to be able to get no resistance against the fortified and this increases our resistance piercing by 100% of our armor piercing value which is why it's important that we actually do have armor pierce on our weapon uh, allowing us to be able to get and just by, just from the weapon alone 30% increase to our resistance pierce as well and then lastly, we've got I've got some purple epic boots, and uh, these are, these are quite nice rolls. Again, once again, you'd probably want to find some kind of combination when it comes to these apocalypse mods. Uh, but it got anomaly power, it's got status power, and it's got cooldown reduction. Pretty much the god roll when it comes to this actual build. Uh, and it comes with supplies to be able to give us our third mod, uh, the third mind to be able to actually chuck it out. Unstoppable force is absolutely amazing in this build because it allows it because our resistance pierce goes all the way up to 80% as you saw at the start. That allows us to be able to get a 40 percent anomaly power increase which is obviously why my anomaly power is so high at base and then we've got uh, untamed power which allows us to be able to deal so much damage of 30 percent of our anomaly power as a five meter radius around us now this is kind of a flex spot as well i'm a i'm a big fan of actually using this in this build because what this allows us to be able to do is when we actually stack up our anomaly power to stupid amounts it, i've seen this hit for anywhere between one to two mil and that's just from casting out a skill. So it turns you almost into a scrapnel grenade in a way. And that's one, that's kind of why I've turned it into the carpet bomber in the first place. Um, so I do think this is a great mod, but it's not necessary. Um, so once again, if you can't get an, a nice apocalypse roll for this one, then feel free to leave it out. It's not going to make too much of a difference. But if you can get it on there, it will just escalate your build up to the next level. So if we go from there over to the skills, and so what we'll have a look into is obviously we'll, we'll cover the skills very, very quickly, and then we'll get into all the all the juicy stuff over on the class tree. So the skills is, is pretty obvious. You've probably already figured this out, but that's going to be our Scrapnel, it's going to be our Blighted Rounds, and it's going to be our Blighted Turret. Blighted Rounds is purely there to be able to go into your DPS phase. The longer you keep these open, the more your, your buffs will actually stay alive. And obviously you do still want to be able to refresh your Mages for Mages Rage, uh, so you will still actually go through these eventually. Uh, but it's not too much of an issue. You will start... You you will still have uh, a decent amount of anomaly power once or a decent amount of damage when you do actually lose these and they go into cooldown so you don't need to worry too much mage's rage is always more important than blighted rounds at least that's my experience uh, but, but as soon as you have both then i highly recommend that you actually do go for, into that main dps phase right there now Scrapnel we've already covered and um, Blighted Turret is purely there to be able to activate Adrenalizing Antenna. It also works as a distraction for enemies to actually go over there and they obviously start to cluster up which allows us to be able to maximize the amount of damage that our Scrapnels can actually hit for. But on top of that it also goes into our self-medication and that allows us to be able to on a 3.5 second cooldown allows us to be able to heal ourselves back up to full and increase our max health. Overall, very, very good choices. Well, on the subject of self-medication, I will say that because of our Scrapnels, uh, because we do have six of them, self-medication doesn't work off every single throw of the of the ability. What it will do is after the sixth throw, it will then send, use self-medication to bring us back up to full. Uh, so that's just something to bear in mind as you actually do play. Going into our class tree though, we have gone primarily by a bomb tree to be able to go all the way to our capstone to be able to get tech bombed, increasing our anomaly power by 50%. The main things to be able to grab are obviously our anomaly power increases in the first place and also our resistance piercing. So obviously this allows us to be able to do even more damage and then feeds back into unstoppable force to give us even more anomaly power. 
I do think that armored unit is pretty much essential just due to how close range you're actually going to have to get with this build. So therefore, increasing our armor by 50% is pretty huge. And because of how many times we're chucking out our scrap metal, because of how short of a cooldown it is, this pretty much is always active. So this gives us quite a lot of uh, endurance. This gives us our tankiness and this allows us to be able to stay in the fight. I have gone for uh, Wipeout because Wipeout is a very good mod to be able to actually maximize DPS as well, especially against those elites. So I highly recommend that you do actually grab that. And because of how much toxic we're inflicting, I've also gone for exposing toxic, allowing us to be able to apply vulnerable, allowing us to increase our DPS even further. The last big, big boost that you do need to be aware of is Adrenalizing Antenna, where activating our Blighted Rounds or black Blighted Turret allows us to be able to get an additional 30% Anomaly Power for us as well as our allies for 30% uh, of 30% for 10 seconds. So this is overall a very good way to be able to do it. I can't really think of any other way to be able to increase it, as if I had one additional point I would probably have put it into Ordnance Technician to be able to ha actually help get our Scrapnels back a little bit faster. But because of how important Vulnerable is when it comes to damage, I can't sacrifice the point to be able to actually go for that cooldown, so therefore this cooldown has actually had to make that sacrifice on our behalf. If we have a look at our Ascension then, so our Ascension is, uh, obviously we're starting to fill this up a little bit more, uh, so I'm only two levels away from actually maxing out pretty much everything that I actually do want to go for. If I was to prioritize what you actually should be aiming for, first 10 points will always go into Anomaly Damage, just, that's just always a no-brainer, that's every single build that should always be full as soon as you have 10 points. Um, but everything else actually does feed into the build. So we've got things like status power that gives us an additional 10% damage onto our scrap nulls, which we'll actually get into very, very shortly. It also allows our toxic to actually deal more damage as well. We've got resistance pierce, which allows us to be able to do even more damage through enemies in the first place. And because of unstoppable force gives us a 5% increase to our anomaly power as well. So if you were to choose between these two, I would highly recommend that you go for resistance pierce just due to that double dip, rather than just getting a pure 10% increase to anomaly power. And then we've also got our armor pierce, which while on paper doesn't actually do much because we are using no resistance against the fortified, that 10% then can becomes 10% into our resistance pierce, which as you've guessed, turns into 5% of our anomaly power. So technically this is probably better than anomaly power. So if I was to completely suggest how you should actually do this, maybe go anomaly damage and then it's up to you whether you go for resistance pierce into there, uh, sorry, anomaly damage into resistance pierce, into armor pierce, into status power, into anomaly power, and then potentially going into damage against elites. I do think damage against elites is a really, really good mod. I would, uh, I would definitely a really good place to actually put some points into, but because of all this to be able to actually increase the base damage of our scrapnels in the first place, I just can't justify going into this without going into this and maximizing the DPS in the first place. Now obviously you can make your own choice about that, but that's just how I would recommend when it comes to this build. And then that lastly just leaves the Pax Tree, and the Pax Tree is purely, purely going for Desolator, so what we're doing is going for Initial Striker, every single time we activate a skill, which we're doing very, very frequently, we're getting an uh, additional 10% of our Anomaly Power on them for 5 seconds. Lethal Devices to be able to allow our uh, Scrapnels to be able to inflict Toxic, allowing us to benefit from those additional Multipliers, and also get 5% of our Anomaly Power as damage if Toxic was refreshed. Painkiller to be able to give us a little bit of additional healing, and this obviously paired with everything else that we've actually looked at so far allows us to be able to run through mobs of enemies and actually yeah, get some really nice heals going off so break their ranks is a decent mod in in of itself but it just doesn't add anything dps wise it's just more there as like a, a win more like a utility kind of side of things it's a nice bonus but it doesn't really add too much but the main thing that makes this build so good is depleted core where our ordinate skills damage is increased by 100 percent of our status power and because as you saw at the start it was around about 138 percent that increases our scrap lord damage by that 138 percent so we're over doubling our damage and it's just insane that's the re real reason it's the real winner as to why scrap lord is just so good now and uh, depleted core just is it just cannot be praised enough as to how good this actually is when it comes to the pack tree so as for the playstyle when it comes to this build, now obviously in this area I can't actually show you, uh, but with scrap nulls are very awkward to actually be able to use in the first place. Now I understand why some people actually do stay away from these, um, but the main thing with this is, um, the reason why I call it the carpet bomber is because you can actually run through a horde of enemies, and this is, works especially well on beast levels, and you can actually just chuck the scrap nulls in front of you, and what it will actually do is it will start planting itself, and then when the enemies run into it because they are treated as mines, they will actually jump up, explode, and then chuck out their cluster bombs. You will actually see some clips in the background where the minimap is just purely deleting behind me because of how effective this tactic actually is and because I'm using untamed power any enemies that get too close to me in the first place will then also take additional damage and that can be enough to actually kill them in the first place as well. 
Now, when it comes to the order of the actual skills that you should be using to be able to maximize your anomaly power, and the reason why uh, Ocreal was, uh, not Ocreal, um, Arbiter was able to be deleted so quickly when it comes to these skills, is basically what you want to do is open up using your pistols just as standard, aiming for those critical shots. Once you think you've got around about three or four critical hits, you then want to chuck out your uh, blighted turret. You then want to activate your blighted rounds, and then you want to go ham with your uh, scrap mill builder. This is the most effective way. This is the, the best kind of uh, scenario, or at least in my testing, in my experience, as to how good this can actually be. And that maximizes the amount of anomaly power that you can actually get, and allows you to be able to maximize the amount of damage and DPS you can actually do. Now I know what you're going to ask me, is this better than a triple turret techno? Because everyone pretty much says that triple turret techno is pretty much nigh on unkillable, it's just untouchable, and uh, what I'm going to tell you is it depends on the situation. I feel like I can kill uh, the boss rounds a lot faster with Scrapnel, uh, but obviously I don't have the tankiness, I don't have the health regen, I don't have the, uh, the, 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 the revive, the, the one time over. When it comes to overclocked, I don't have anything to that extent. I do think that this is more fun. I do find this to be more fun, and granted that is a uh, subjective opinion, um, I can't actually tell that for, you, for yourself or anything, that's for, purely for you to be able to make your own minds up on, uh, but the fact that I'm able to run through so many hordes of enemies, I'm able to see so many explosions, I'm able to see so much destruction, it genuinely just tickles my heart, and I genuinely do think this is uh, probably one of the better builds that actually does exist, and I'm looking to be able to get that god roll to actually further this even further. I, I just honestly, I feel like this is genuinely one of the better builds that actually currently exists, and I can see myself actually using this when we we do streams when we do carries because of just because it's more fun to myself and allows me to be able to do all of that dps so that just pretty much wraps up everything to do with the carpet bomber build now i will say one caveat because obviously we are at the end of the video and thank you all so much for making your way to the end of the video it really does it is is appreciated by myself um, but we will be doing a meme version of this build I, I genuinely had so much fun with this that i've got something in mind to be able to actually turn this from a carpet bomber into a bomber man and i genuinely am excited to be able to actually bring that forward i'm, I'm looking forward to see how i can actually make it so consistent that it isn't actually just a meme but it is actually a build in of itself as well uh, but if you're interested let me know leave a like let me know in the comment section down below is that something that you're intrigued is something that you're interested to actually see what i can actually come up with and uh yeah that just pretty much wraps up that so thank you all so much for the, uh, making your way to the end of the video thank you all so much to the babylonian family as always for their continued support it really does mean the world to us that just leaves me to say keep yourself safe keep yourselves well and i'll see you all on our next video